Amen. The song we just sang said he came to me. How many is glad that he came to you this morning? Amen. How many is glad that he didn't just pass you by this morning? Amen. There was, there was once a day when I thought that the Lord possibly would pass me by because of the way maybe that I was living. Maybe he was in that situation, but you realize that God came to you anyway. Amen. I'm glad that he didn't just pass us by. I'm glad that he didn't you know, just move on by us. I'm glad he cared enough about us. Amen. I'm glad he cared enough about us to come down to the earth that he created. Amen. He didn't send another superhero. Amen. He didn't create somebody just so he can sin, just so he didn't have to come on his own. Amen. But he came, he robed himself in flesh and died upon an old rugged cross. And I am thankful and I am very glad of that this morning. Amen. If you, if you feel the same way, let's just clap unto the Lord. Amen. If we all could just go ahead and stand for the reading of the word, I want to go ahead and jump on into it. Uh, if you have your quarterly, it's on page seven. Amen. And if you don't, you can go turn into John chapter three, be starting at verse three. Amen. When you're there, please say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful day it is to serve the Lord. Amen. John three. Starting at verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God of heaven that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit verse 7 says marvel not that i say unto unto thee ye must be born again verse 8 goes on to say the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth so it is every one that is born of the spirit and in layman's terms or in Josh Hampton's vocabulary, that would be more the wind blows where it wants to. We don't know where it comes from or why it does what it does. We can't control it, but it's going to do whatever it wants to do. And that's the same with the Spirit of God. If God wants to pour out His Spirit in this place, God will come in and He will pour out His Spirit upon this place. Amen. If God wants to go into another country such as Africa or Asia and pour out His Spirit there, then God can do that. Amen. Because He is the one that controls his spirit. He is the one that controls the wind. If you could turn on over to John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. It says, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Verse 8 says, For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Verse 10 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence thou hast thou that living water. Verse 12 says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. You may be seated at this time. The key verse is John chapter 4, verse 10. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. The water that he has to give today is not just water that's going to satisfy our soul for but a season. Amen. But it says that it will be a 
uh, uh, water in our soul that is springing forth into everlasting life. Amen. We can walk in newness of life. We can live every day with this wellspring of water, this water that the Lord is, is trying to give to this Sumerian lady. And the key thought is when we receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit, we receive the nature and the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we could, let's pray for just a moment. Oh, Lord, we come before you right now, God, asking, Lord, that you would just come into this place in a mighty way, God, Lord, that you will just pour out, Lord, your spirit upon us, God, that you will anoint our hearts and anoint our minds, God, to hear what it is that the word is trying to say in this place today, God. We ask, Lord, that you will move and that you will touch somebody today, Lord, just pour out your anointing, pour out your power, and pour out your spirit and your presence in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen. Praise the Lord. In today's lesson, we will examine God's given nature. Amen. And we're going to do that by seeing how he interacted with others and by viewing some important gifts that he gives, gives us in our daily life. And Jesus calls us to be worship, to be worshipers. And he clearly specifies you know, how, how we're going to do this and how this is going to be done. And it says that we do not worship God as payment. Because if we try to pay God for the gifts that he gives us, that becomes a purchase. And that takes away from the gift given that God is trying to give to us because we would make it a purchase. And, and, and God is not a merchant today. God, God is a giver today. Amen. The lesson title is God the Generous Giver. Amen. I, I come to say today with a very loud voice that God is a giver. His nature is to be a giver. Amen. He, he came to seek and save those that are lost. He came to give them something. He came to give them salvation. He didn't come to see what, what they could do for him, but he came to see what he could do for them. He came to give them salvation, deliverance. He gave the children of Israel deliverance out of bondage and out of Egypt, and he brought them across the desert, and he brought them across the Red Sea, and, and he brought them away from Pharaoh's army because he is a giver. He didn't expect nothing in return. Amen. He gave unto them freely. And that's the way God is today. God is still that way this very hour. God is a giver. Amen. God looks at us saying, yo, what can I give this church today? What can I give Calvary today? Amen. And we come into this place and God says, I can give you salvation. I can give you deliverance from cigarettes and from alcohol and from drugs. God says, I can, I can carry you when you're at your very deepest. I can carry you when you're at your very lowest because that is God's very nature is to give to his people. Amen. The word gives us uh, many definitions and I looked up on the internet this morning as to what Webster's uh, dictionary would say as a definition for a giver and it is to present voluntary without expecting compensation. Amen. That is the way God is today. He comes to give. And he's not expecting for us to give him anything physical in return. He does seek our worship. He does seek our praise. The scripture in Psalm says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. But if we don't praise the Lord, he's still going to be a giver. He's still going to go through this world and through this earth seeking whom he can find. Amen. He, he is trying to give things to us and, and all we've got to do is receive them today. All we've got to do is receive the gifts that God is trying to give unto us. Amen. When you go to a bank and try to get a loan, amen, the, bank, the banks aren't givers. I work at a bank I have for almost seven years now and it's not our nature to give someone an interest-free loan or an interest-free credit card or to pay 7 and 8 and 10% on a CD. That's not our nature. Amen. Our nature is to draw interest on what you borrow. When you go into a loan and you ask them, you know, I want you to give me something. I mean, they're probably going to give you a pamphlet showing you what, you know, what they offer. Amen. But it all comes with a price. There's a price that has to be paid. When you, when you get a loan or, or a checking account, there's something that it takes to open that. There's something that it takes, whether it be interest you know, on what you borrow. But God is not like that. That is not God's nature. God is here to give freely. God freely came and God freely gives unto us. Amen. You go to a car lot and you try to purchase a car. They ain't going to give you that car for what they paid for it. Amen. Can somebody witness to that? They're going to, they're going to mark it up like 100%. 
they're going to make $10,000 on that car or two or $3,000 on that car. There is a price that they're accepting to receive. But God is not here to receive money and God is not here to receive anything from us except our worship and our praise. And that is something that we can freely give to God. I mean, it's not this world's nature to give. Brother Connor here is a real estate man. I mean, he, he would do anybody here the best deal he could, but he still has to make a living. So does everybody else in here. Wherever you work at, you're out to make a living. Amen. But God is not out to make a living today. God is out to give something to us. And the key to that is that we have to first receive that. We have to know what God is trying to give, and we have to be open to receive what God is trying to give to us today. We see as early as Genesis that God is a giver. With Adam and Eve, we see that God has, he gave them everything they needed. He gave them this perfect garden, with all the food they needed. The scripture says, and God said, behold, I give you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every herb for meat, and it was so. Amen. God gave Adam and Eve the trees. He gave them all the water they need, all the nutrients they need. He gave them every, all the food to eat. He supplied their every need. He gave them rest. Amen. All they had to do was, was just... You know, just work in the land. All they had to do was just keep this place. And that was their, their sole job was to walk in the, in the midst of the garden and talk to God and have a relationship with God. And God even gave them clothes when they sinned. Amen. They tried to sew the fig leaves together, but it wasn't good enough for God. So God sacrificed some animals and gave them clothes. Genesis chapter 3 and 21 says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothed them. Even when they sinned against God, even when they turned their face on God and was not in the midst of the garden where they were supposed to be, where they normally were, God still gave to them. Amen. We may turn our face upon God and we may turn toward this world, but God is there to receive us when we come back because God is a giver. God isn't out to receive from us, but God is out to give. God is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And there's only one way to heaven, and that's through and by Jesus Christ. Amen. The ultimate giver. God is a giver today. Amen. We see it back when he created this earth and this world. It was nothing but void, nothing but chaos. But God, his spirit moved upon the face of the earth, and he created something out of nothing. Amen. And when he created me, he created something out of nothing. Amen. I was born into this world a sinner. Amen. We were all born in this world in sin. Amen. But God, uh, uh, he, he paid a price. He purchased the church with his very own blood and he bought us. Amen. And if we turn our face and we backslide and go back into the world and we turn around and come back into the house of God, God will still receive us because God's nature is to give. Amen. He'll give you salvation all over again. Amen. If you give up cigarettes once and you go back and you do it again, God will grant you that deliverance once again. Amen. We serve a God of first chance. We serve a God of second chances. We serve a God of third chances. How many ever chances we need, God is there to give. Amen. We do serve a giving God this morning. Amen. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say it, but we do serve a giving God. How many has ever received something of the Lord, whether it be salvation, healing, deliverance? All those came by the grace and the mercy and the giving nature of God. Amen. In Genesis chapter 22, we see another example of how God give, gave to his people. Amen. Uh, I want to read it here real fast. Genesis 22 said, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and give thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, and upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went. 
into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire of the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him for now. I know that thou, that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and, the, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be Jehovah Jireh means God my provider, God my giver. God shall give and provide for his people. Amen. God was out to see that Abraham really feared him and really loved him. And then God provided a ram instead of Isaac. Amen. God worked it out, amen, to where I, Abraham got to the verge and to the very point. I believe the knife was drawn back, ready to lunge and to kill his own child, but God said, hold on, Abraham. Hold on for just a moment. And he sent a ram and said uh, to be sacrificed on the altar instead of his own son. And he said, I see this day that you fear me and that you love me, amen. God is out to see that we fear him and that we love him. He wasn't looking for a, a physical sacrifice. God wasn't looking for a blood sacrifice that day. What God was looking for is for Abraham's obedience. Amen. God desires our obedience today. He wanted to know that Abraham truly feared him. And I think today that God many times, he, he wants to see how much we truly do love him and how much we truly do Fear him. I believe that's what God is looking for in many of our situations today. Amen. I believe God is not, not maybe testing us or trying us, but God is allowing certain situations to happen. Amen. Where he can see how much we do love him and how much we really do fear him. Amen. When in reality, God, he, he just wants to know, amen, how much we truly care. Amen. He says, I give you all these things. Amen, and I want to know and I want to see that you care and that you love me and that you would do my very commandment. Amen, I've heard it over and over again, people saying that God has put me in this bad situation or God has allowed these horrible things to come upon me, amen, to test me or to try me. But I believe that God is just looking to see how much obedience we have in our darkest situation in our hardest, hardest, worst situation, how much do we really trust and lean on God? Amen, I'm reminded of Job. Job, his friends questioned his very integrity. His wife said, Job, won't you just curse God and die? Just go and just forget about God. He's allowed all this stuff to happen. He's taken our children. Amen, he's taken all our livestock, all our money. He's taken everything we have. Amen, but Job stood up to his wives and naked came I into this world and naked shall I leave. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Yet though he slay me, I will trust in him. It goes on to say in uh, Job 23, it says, I go forward, I cannot find him. I go backwards, I cannot find him. I go to the right where he normally works and he's not there. I go to the left and he's not there but he knoweth the way that I take. 
Amen. He says, my foot have not slipped. I have not lost my step. I have kept his way and not declined. So in the end, the Lord blessed the latter end of Job greater than the beginning. In the beginning of the book of Job, it says that Job wanted for nothing. It said Job had everything. Job was a man loved Loved by God. He was a very close man with God. He walked with God. He talked with God. He had, a, he had a relationship with the Creator. He had a relationship with God. Amen. He had everything that he wanted. Amen. There was a hedge of protection around him and around his family and around his livestock. He was a very wealthy man. Amen. But it says that the end was greater than the beginning. That, I believe many times in our life that God is going to bless our end greater than he's going to bless our beginning. Amen. Because he's trying to see how much we obey him, how much we trust him. And when he sees how much we do and how much we sacrifice for him, he is going to give unto us. Amen. He is looking to give unto his people. I tell you, God is a giver today. It says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Amen. His end was greater than his beginning. God gave back everything that the enemy took away. Amen. The enemy and the devil and your, ad your adversary may have taken everything that you've got. Everything in your life you may feel like has been taken away or stripped away. Maybe your children has been taken from you. Amen. Maybe they're not in the church anymore. Amen. Maybe, maybe your family is against you. Maybe your co-workers on your job don't like you. You feel like God has taken everything that you once had. But I come to tell you today that Micah 7 and 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Because when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. How many believe today that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your situation, we serve a God that shall provide your very need. Amen. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Shalom. Amen. He is God above every other God. He is King above every other King. He is Lord above every other Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the God that stands at the beginning and declares your ending. Amen. We serve an awesome and a mighty God today. Amen. We serve a God that is here to give back unto you. Amen. I want to, I thank God today for his word. I thank God for giving us the gospel. Amen. How many is thankful for the gospel? How many is thankful for the word? Amen. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and it became flesh and it dwelt among us. Amen. That's what kind of God we serve. Oh, we serve a God that came to this earth that he created. He robed himself in flesh. He died upon an old rugged cross. He shed his blood for our sins. Amen. That we may one day have salvation. Oh, we serve an awesome God. We serve a given God today. Hallelujah. Let's clap unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, it was good enough for the apostles. It's good enough for me. Stephen was stoned and kicked out of the city. Paul and Silas was put into a prison. Amen, but it didn't matter. Oh, because at the midnight hour, they begin to sing and they begin to shout and they begin to worship God. Amen, and the earthquake happened. The doors opened. Amen, and God delivered them. Amen, Peter was put in prison. He had four guards on every side of him. There was guards at the door. Amen. This is Peter, the one that preached on the day of Pentecost. This is the one that delivered to us Acts 2.38, the plan of salvation. Amen. He was put into a prison, left for dead. Amen. They were coming in the morning to kill him. They couldn't kill him that day because it was the Passover. They had to come the next day. They, had to, they were coming. They were going to kill him. They already killed James. But it wasn't good enough just to kill James. They wanted to cut the church to the core. Amen. They wanted to put an end to the church. 
Amen. Who better to kill than the man that's preaching the word? Who better to kill than the one that's going to deliver the word to us so that we can follow after him? Amen. They were out to kill uh, the apostles and they were out to kill the, the main one, Peter. Amen. The one that preached on the day of Pentecost, they were out to kill him. Amen. Because of the word of God. Because of the, the gospel that he was preaching. But because of the good news that they were sharing with everybody in the town. Amen. They were out to kill him. They were out to destroy him. But I thank God for the word today. I thank him for the gospel today. Amen. Skipping over into the New Testament. Getting back to the, uh, to the uh, book here. Uh, it says that Jesus uh, meets an unborn man. And the need for a new birth of water and a spirit was relevant. Amen. Jesus responded to Nicodemus' opening statement when he, and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was missing the most important part of his life. Salvation. New birth. Amen. Acts 2 and 38. He was, he was missing that baptism. Amen. He was missing, uh, he was missing the, the baptism of the water and the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. That, that tends to get in people's way of being born again, you know, it, that not knowing what needed to be done. Amen. Many times accolades and awards and, and our accomplishments sometimes tend to get in our way from allowing us uh, to follow God and, and to be saved and, and to come into the house of God and to, be, and to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But that need not be. Amen. That need not be today because in the end, the only thing that matters is have we been born again. Amen. How is, how is our relationship with Jesus Christ? That's what matters in the end. Amen. It may not matter to you. Uh, it may not matter very much to you right now and, to the, and this morning. But I want to say that when the end of time comes, amen, it better matter to you. Amen. And you better have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Nicodemus questioned God and said, how is this to be? How can a man which is old be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee that ye must be born again. Amen. Unless we've been born again, we cannot. I mean, cannot. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. The book says that we won't even get a glimpse. We won't even get a peek of heaven unless we have been born again. Amen. Acts 2 and 38 is the key to this new birth. Amen. Jesus gave us the plan of salvation. Amen. And we find it in Acts 2 and 38. There's no other chapter that is written to the lost people except for the books, book of Acts. And there is no passage in the Bible that gives us a plan of salvation except for Acts 2 and verse 38. Amen. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And ye shall, ye shall receive the gift of, the free gift that I give you of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God living in us. That is what he is trying to give to us today. Since the fall of man, God has always had to have a blood sacrifice. This was up until about 2,000 and some odd years ago. Amen. When he came to this earth that he created and he robed himself in flesh. Amen. He didn't send a second person in the Godhead. He didn't send a superhero he didn't send somebody else to do the dirty work for him. No, he came of himself. He stepped down into this earth that he created. Amen. Philippians 2 says, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, made in the likeness of of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient 
unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, things in heaven and of things in the earth and things underneath the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God stepped down into this earth that he created. Amen. He, he gave of himself to us. He didn't walk down the streets of heaven and say, you look pretty good, come here. I want to send you to save these people. He came of his own free will. He came of his self, robed himself in flesh. Amen, they stretched him wide. They stretched him tall. They put three nails in his hand, nailed him to this old rugged cross. Amen, and he shed his blood for me and for you. Amen, he took on the form of, of a servant. Amen. He became as lowly as he could be. Amen. I, I, I can't quote it word for word, but the scripture says, he that once was rich became poor. Amen. So that us that is poor and lost in sin can someday be rich in Christ. Amen. God came and he gave himself and he purchased us. Amen. We serve a, a given God today. Amen. He didn't even have a tomb that was his own. It was a borrowed tomb. Amen. He gave of the fullness of God in a body. Amen. How many is glad today that God came to this earth to save us, to seek after us, to find us out of the mully grubs, to find us out of the muck and out of the mire of this world and out of sin. God came and he found us. Oh, and he gave us salvation. He gave us deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. God healed our bodies. God healed our bodies today. Amen. Has God ever healed somebody? Amen. Has God ever touched you today? Amen. Has God ever granted you repentance today? Oh, has God ever baptized you? Amen. And filled you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, let's clap unto the Lord. Oh, let's wave our hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I got to move on. Transparency number one, Brother Perry. Amen. The Lord often reached out to people. And he used common experiences. Amen. Uh, uh, he used everyday analogies. And for uh, one of the analogies, he used uh, the analogy of the wind. It said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Amen. To Nicodemus, Jesus likened the work of his Spirit to the blowing of the wind. Jesus first explained that man does not control the wind. God controls the wind. We don't know where it comes from. We don't know every time what way it's blowing. Amen. It may come from the south. And then when you go to check it, it may be coming from the north. Amen. It just blows. And it goes wherever it wants to. It blows however it wants to. Amen. That's just like the Spirit of God. Amen. That's just like the Spirit of God. It falls where it wants to. Amen. And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of the Lord fell. Amen. They were in one mind, in one accord. I come to tell you today, if you want the Spirit of God to fall in this place, we got to get in one mind and we got to get in one accord. Amen. That is the key. Amen. To the Spirit of God moving in this place. Amen. If we come in here, if we come in here with our mind going 20 different directions, amen, it's going to be hard for us to feel the Spirit of God move or to see the Spirit of God move. Oh, but if we check ourselves at the door, we come in, if we lay aside every sin, if we lay aside every heartache, and if we lay aside every hurt, we come into this place coming in one way and we leave a different way. I tell you, God will meet us here. God will find us here and He will give us His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says you may come in the north, but you're going to leave out the south. You may come in the east, but you're going to leave out the west. When we come into the house of God, we can never leave the same way we came. 
Hey, man, we can't leave the same way we came. Hey, man, we come in here with heartache. We come in here with pain. We come in here with depression and fatigue. But when we come into the house of God and the Spirit of the Lord begins to move, oh, like a mighty wind blowing over this place. Oh, and the heavens begin to shake. Amen. This place begins to go up in smoke. Amen. And God shows up. God will pour out and God will give unto us. Amen. And we're not going to leave here the same way we came in. Amen. Oh, I used to be a sinner, but I am no longer a sinner. Amen. Because God came in and he rearranged my life. Amen. He found me when I was at my lowest. Amen. I've told it many times in this church. Amen. I received the Holy Ghost laying with a bunch of eight-year-olds in a children's ministry show. Amen. God can show up in the midst of kids. And God can show up in the midst of elders. And God can show up in the midst of people in their 30s and in their 40s. Amen. We don't know when God's going to show up. All we can come into this place. All we can do is come expecting something of God. Amen. God wants to see us. God wants to see us worship. And God wants to see us praise Him. Amen. And sacrifice unto Him. Amen. We got to give unto God today. Amen. God said that I'll give unto you. Amen. If you draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. Amen. We got to draw nigh to God today. We got to draw close to God, as close as we can get to Him. Amen. Amen. If you, if you want to receive what God has to give, amen, we got to be willing to receive. Amen. How many is willing to receive something of God? Amen. There's so much that God has to give. Oh, the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. The five ministries that are found in the church. Amen. I'm glad that God gave us the church, a place that we can come and a place that we can worship. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't know where the wind bloweth. Amen. We're not in control. We're not in control of God's Spirit. If God didn't want to show up today, amen, God wouldn't have to show up today. Amen. But we can come and we can praise God and we can sing unto Him and we can worship unto Him. Amen. And He feels that. He recognizes that. Amen. And He begins to allow His Spirit to move. Amen. We come in here at two o'clock here in just a moment. Amen. And we begin to worship. And when we begin to shout, let's keep this in mind. Amen. We, God's presence does not have to show up. Amen. God does not have to show up in this place. Amen. But God said that I will if you worship unto me. Oh, if you praise my name. Oh, everything that I breath, praise the Lord. He said, I'll show up and I will give unto you. Hey man, I want to move on here. It says that the giver meets a needy woman. Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the at the well in uh, John chapter four. Hey man, she was a Samaritan woman, and the Jews and the Samaritan they didn't have they didn't have no contact with each other. And I, and it said that Jesus had been walking for for probably around six hours, and he was very weary and very tired. So he stopped at the well, and he encountered this woman that was soiled by years of unclean living. And this woman was very shocked at the request that he gave: "Fetch me something to drink. Give me something to drink." And possibly she thought that he was very very thirsty because he was willing to communicate with her knowing that, that they don't know that he's a Jew and knowing that that, uh, that is very, uh, it's against what they believe and it's against what they, what they do. And, and, and she was shocked at the request because he was stepping out of bounds here. Amen. He was going further than anybody has ever gone before. But he saw the need of this woman. And being the giver that he is, he said that I will give unto her. He came up to her and he said, give me something to drink. He wanted to see that if she was willing to give. Amen. And Jesus quickly addressed the real reason and the real situation. Amen. And he pointed out her need. Amen. She had a very real need. And it wasn't for physical water, but it was for spiritual water. Water, Amen. And Brother Perry, if you could put up the second transparency. Jesus assured this broken woman that he could not provide that he could provide for her not just a drink of water that will supply her thirst for now 
or for this season, but that God could give her a drink of the living water where she will never thirst again. Amen. If you ain't had that drink of that living water this morning, there is no better place in the house of God to receive the drink. Oh, that you will never thirst again. Amen. We serve a given God. And he says that I will give you this water. And in the reading it said, if you go back to the reading here, it said in uh, verse 14, whosoever drinketh of the water that I give shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be a wellspring of water exploding, bursting and springing into everlasting life. Amen. This water is going to carry us. Amen. It's going to carry us. Hallelujah. But the water that I shall give shall be in him a wellspring of living water springing into everlasting life. Amen. Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, and the scriptures have said, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spoke he of the Spirit. That was in John chapter 7. Amen. The Spirit of God, the, the giver is a spirit. Amen. It said the giver desires true worship. And, and part A there says the giver is a spirit. God is a spirit. Amen. The Spirit of God, He don't have flesh and blood like we do. Amen. He don't have the bones like we do. He is a Spirit. Amen. This is an important point to understand for several reasons. First, it is vital to our, to, for us to be able to grasp the oneness of God. Only when we recognize God's essence and spiritual can we begin to comprehend the wonder of His incarnation. Incarnation when He came and He robed Himself in flesh and died upon an old rugged cross. Amen. God desires worship for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We got to worship Him in spirit and in truth today. Amen. He desires our worship. Amen. He's going to give because it's His nature to give, but He still desires something from us. Amen. We don't have to give anything to him but if we want to receive amen what God has for us today then I urge you to give unto God amen it don't have to be money it don't have to be time amen it can be your worship it can be your prayer life amen God will supply your very need amen if we could all let's just stand in this place amen if sister Austin could come at this time amen I want to draw to an end here we got to worship him in spirit and in truth today Amen. If we could, let's just lift our hands and let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. Oh, God, we thank you for the word, Lord, that you gave. Oh, God, you are a giver. Oh, Lord, you are a giver. God, you give us everything that we need. Hallelujah, Lord. We're nothing without you, God. Oh, Lord, we want to come into this place. Oh, God, we want to worship you. God, we want to receive the gifts of the Spirit. We want to receive the fruit of the Spirit. God, we want to receive something from you today. Oh, Lord, we know, God, that we don't control the wind and we don't control your Spirit. Oh, God, you are the controller. You are the master, God. Oh, Lord, but we ask, pour out your Spirit in this place today. We need you, God. Oh, we need revival, Lord. We need a move of God in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's clap unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well,